Hey, how's it going, everybody? Any Pride here with Milk and Cookies Total War. And I am Attila the Great. How are you doing? And we're going to be bringing you a siege battle that we played a couple days ago. Now, I don't always play land battles on Rome 2. It's 95% of what I do. But very occasionally, I decide to hop into a siege battle. And this was a very cinematic experience. I love looking at the cities and just looking at the cultures and everything that are in Rome 2. And obviously, we get a lot of that Egyptian culture here on Alexandria. You can see the Lighthouse of Alexandria in the background. But yeah, we just decided to hop on and do a siege battle. Now, I'm going to say right now, the skill level in sieges is not very high in general. I don't think it takes a lot of skill to win any kind of siege battle because it basically just revolves around plopping units in city streets and hoping that they win. But still, from a cinematic perspective, like I said, very interesting and a lot of fun to watch. So Attila, you want to talk a little bit about how this battle started at the beginning of the army setups, just a little bit about everything that's going on right now? Yeah, sure. I mean, first off, you can see that we have t two Greek heavy onagers, one each, and we started to bombard these walls, and you have successfully done so, and so have I. And now I sent in one of my uh, light cab to take the uh, gates, which, you know, you don't want to face those arrows pointing at you, so I had to sacrifice one of my light calves for that. And they're doing a pretty good job at it. I mean, they just lost one guy so far. And I can see the beautiful view, as you explained, from the Alexandria. And I can see one of my artillery is firing these fireballs. And I got the beautiful picture right here. So at the point, I can see also the enemy units standing in the front line and doing the formations and being ready to repel us. So... Yeah, well, basically what we're going to try to do here at the very beginning of the battle, Attila's going to funnel through his hole in his wall, I'm going to funnel through my hole over here. And it's really funny because we were talking about it earlier, and we've been using a lot of heavy onagers in the siege battles we've been playing, and we were just discussing, we were like, yeah, these guys are 1,800 talents, probably not worth that cost. Like, mm. I've, it's 1,800 talents, and at most you're generally going to get one hole in the wall. And <laughs> we were just kind of debating whether that was actually worth the cost or not. And 11,700 talents, probably not worth it. But we're going to press play on 3, 2, 1, press play, and get into this replay. So that artillery shot actually ended up taking out a few Triarii and some legionary cohorts in the back. They actually ended up killing maybe 20 men or so. Oh yeah, definitely. And yeah, the bombarding is about to finish up here. I'm going to end up actually putting another hole in the wall. One thing that was very interesting, and I think is definitely a mistake from our Roman... Uh, Roman enemy here is well one he's gonna send in his equites, which is smart He can kill some of the light cavalry maybe get some of them off the field But they actually do have a bonus versus large so maybe not gonna be able to do as much damage as he would like to But mm. one, one mistake that I think both the Pontus player and the Roman player made is they're just gonna let us come into the city without defending the holes in the walls mm -hmm. which I don't know, talk about that a little bit. Like, do you think that's a mistake, or do you think that was kind of their idea? To it, it is a huge mistake. I mean, to gather around in the center uh, hoping for a victory is not a good idea. So basically, if you see that the enemy has only two onagers, which you know for a fact that, maybe you wouldn't know exactly, but you know, you still have a feeling that they will be breaching only two walls, which is exactly that what happened. I mean, we breached two walls and we we're trying to get in. So I would basically put my whatever pikes I got in here, in this formation, which I'm um, pointing out now from my, uh, well, the, the painting, right? So, put your pikes in this formation, put your pikes in this formation, and then it would give us a lot of trouble to get into this, um, the, you know, the city. So, basically they have opened open the gates for us, like invitation, and we took that invitation, and now we're uh, just plan planning our next moves, so that is what I'm gonna do. I, I did try, you know, I successfully tried to repel those equities, which I successfully done so, and now they are pulling back. So now we're gonna, you know, start to strategize our um, point of view here. So, and our artillery is still bombing. Seems like they aren't out of ammo yet, but they should should be soon enough. Yeah. And so. And you, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Basically, there are gonna be three avenues into the city. There's gonna be the middle street right here. There's going to be this side over here where your chariots and some of your other units are going to come later in the battle. And of course, those will make a huge impact because chariots are stupidly broken at the moment. <laughs> but then my avenue of attack is going to be right here. Some of my units I'm going to send right here to try to kind of pincer these Roman units that he sent up here. And then the rest of my army is going to go all the way back here and attack from this direction. And 
this direction on the city street. So we're basically going to try to surround everyone. They've gathered up in the centra central plaza. And while putting pikes on each end of this plaza is a pretty decent idea, I think just moving them up to the gaps right here at the beginning of the battle would have made it really hard for us to breach. And like I said, one, I don't think sieges take a lot of skill because it is mostly about just troop compositions and whether you bring a lot of pikes because if you spam pikes in siege battles as defender, it is almost impossible to win. But yeah, p personally, I just don't think that it takes a lot of skill. But again, it's not this is this battle is not so much about the skill as it is about the cinematic perspective on everything. So again, what mm. I'm gonna try to do here is send a bunch of these Scutari spearmen and the cavalry up this side of the city and just keep capturing all these towers. Now, it's not to convert the towers and have them shoot the enemy army because it's not gonna happen. Their units aren't over here. It's just mm. to get them off my back and make them stop shooting me. So as yes. soon as I cap these, I can get bring my army over here and then try to attack him from the rear while you attack from the front. Exactly. So I have also printed uh, from the, in the map explaining how you're moving your troops and same goes for me how I'm going to move my troops. And basically what you told about the chariots is a funny thing. I mean, sure, I do agree that they're OP, but it's also kind of fun to watch how they wreck everything, you know. And they also set some booby traps here, but that's not going to affect me because uh, it's only regular stones. It's just going to you know, hold my cab units, so they're not going to make any damage yeah, at well, all. What do those traps actually do? Do they just slow your movement speed? Down? They just slow, yeah. Oh, okay. They just slow my speed. And that's lucky enough for me because if you put some spikes, uh, which they shoot, uh, then it would be game over for my chariots or any cab units who try to get in there. So basically now I'm catching up with these uh, cab units here, equities. I don't know if you intentionally or mystically... Uh, I'm sure he didn't intentionally let them get mm, don't think so either, because they're not even facing me, you see? Yeah. So now I'm going to kill them. And now he's realizing that, he's like, oh my god, why am I standing there with my cat? So he's just trying to pull back. But I'm going to chase him all the way here. While I'm doing so, I'm sending in my infantry, Toro Swordsman, to get in here and kill these degenerate cohorts. So I'm going to send my uh, Cretan archers to pound at his, um, whatever, he, you know, skirmishes they can find. And I'm going to see that you're going to bring in a couple units here and hit these guys three Ori's and uh, sorry Vigilis and uh, Legion of Cohorts so it's gonna be kind of a double front fight or triple front I will say because I'm gonna get in here and in here and you're gonna get in from there and then basically you're gonna send another more units as you explained earlier like from the backs and that's gonna help me a lot because when I send in my chariots he's gonna be so like not ready for that I don't know if he's not ready or just I don't know maybe he's I don't know, maybe concentrating on you. Yeah. So that, that kind of helped me a lot because they're not facing, these hopeless are not facing me. So I'm going to be have really easy moment here. Well, yeah, you... let's talk about that when it actually happens. Of course. Like, that hasn't happened yet. People have no idea what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> of course. So yeah, let's just wait till that happens. But what we're going to do right now is I'm going to send my veteran shield warriors and a bunch of my other swords units up here to uh, engage the Vigilates and the Legionary Cohorts over on the other side of where a lot of these Thorax Swordsmen and Triarii and Legionary Cohorts are engaging. So while he's trying to cut through that side, I'm going to try to cut through this side. And Veteran Shield Warriors against Legionary Cohort, it's a pretty even fight, but they will not be able to deal with my Noble Swords. And of course, they have Vigilates up in the front, so not going to be able to win that engagement at all. So we're going to get a little bit of a cinematic perspective here, get in on the Lusitani nobles as they go into melee combat and hopefully we should be able to cut through a bunch of these vigilates and then meet up with the Egyptian infantry over on the other side. Yes, exactly. That is what I'm waiting for patiently and now you're coming in with your Lusitani nobles which is very nice. I know it's going to be a really easy battle against the vigilates but Legionary cohorts on the other hand is going to be difficult, more difficult but eventually you're going to succeed on that as well. And now I can see that you're sending in your uh, calves, scooter calves into this formation. So this is excellent strategy in, in one sense. I mean, sure, it doesn't take that a lot of skills, but still, um, I would say it's kind of good strategy. You know, I mean, most people wouldn't even do this kind of way. I mean, they would rather, I think, get in from one point and rather than going from different directions, you know? Yeah. So, in one sense, I mean, it is a good strategy point of view, so... And we can see, as you said, a little bit more close-up shots and cinematic, you know, skills here. Uh, it's really beautiful to see melee, fighting melee. That's one of my favorites. 
I don't know about you, but sword versus sword is so beautiful, rather than sword versus spears. Yeah, the animations seem better. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the animations actually change depending on what units you're fighting. I mean, obviously, sword units are always going to have sword animations, but whether they do different animations against spear versus sword or versus slinger or so, it does seem like the bigger the attack discrepancy between two units, the cooler the animations become. But mm -hmm. I'm not actually sure if that's true or not. Over on this side, I have a bunch of my Iberian skirmishers shooting at these pikemen. Uh, one thing about this Pontus player, like again, not trying to hate on him, but for much of this battle, he doesn't really do much. I think he just sets his pikes up in, uh, in like a certain street and hopes that that'll be enough. But he doesn't actually micro them or attempt to like respond to what we're doing. And definitely when the chariots come in, you'll see what we mean there. Which they're they're about to go into melee pretty soon here, right? Yeah, almost. Because I have still not taken the towers yet, and one of my uh, Nub Nubian spearmen, they're about to take it. See, um, I, th I couldn't risk those arrows taking out my chairs, even though maybe they wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, take them out, but still, I couldn't take the chance. So, yeah, first off, and second off, also, he, he had a lot of hoplites in here, and that's another thing that I wondered. Would he try to face me or not? So I was gonna send in there some uh, men, like infantry men, uh, Galatian Royal Guards, Royal Peltas General, and I have also, as I said, Nubian Spearmen. So in case that he would try to uh, repel me with those uh, hooplites, uh, these guys would do fine, I mean, one-on-one. -on -one. And then I would just, you know, that was the plan, send in my chariots and then try to hit them in the bags. But that's not gonna happen because he, he's, he's actually just gonna stand still here and not facing me. So I don't know what he's thinking, He's not to... thinking. I think he just wasn't mm. microing his troops. <laughs> no, no, he sure was not. Because I think you have taken out a lot of his pike units here with your missiles. And now the Roman sees that, so he's trying to repel you. Yeah, he lost uh, maybe two pike units, but at least one full pike unit to my javelins. And then finally the Roman player was like, why are you letting yourself get shot? And moves this guy forward and yes. try to chase me off. So, I mean, he had his Peltas there and he was actually shooting back a little bit, but mm. I've lost maybe 30, 40 men in my skirmishers and he lost an entire, I think his general pike unit. So definitely not a good trade for him at all. Not a good idea. And now we can see that the legionary cohorts are starting wavering. I'm winning the battle here. So the Roman, he did a pretty smart move. He, he knows that I'm gonna kill him all. So what does he do? He pulls back. He pulls back where he thinks he's safe and perhaps that is the biggest mistake. But on the other hand, I don't blame the Roman because, as you said earlier, Pontus, he doesn't support that great. He just stands still with his uh, pikes. He doesn't micro or nothing. So I don't think any the Roman could have done anything more than that. So here my chariots are coming in. Yep, I'm in insert mode with them as they run through and ravage your guys of course there's no team killing in this game so they don't actually do any damage to them but it's funny to see them get, get knocked over and mm. we're gonna look at these hoplites and literally not a single one of them turns around so okay normally a hoplite is going to be able to if it's in a tight compact formation is going to be able to tie down a chariot for a while it might not kill them you're going to need more than that to kill them but he's going to not turn them around and not click on a single attack order so mm. like and he wasn't AFK, like he was actually doing stuff, just not a lot. Like I don't even think he noticed that these chariots got near got into the half light. So you're gonna run through <laughs> and they're already probably up to about 150, 200 kills at the moment. But totally surprised. But but I mean look at that. Like he, he doesn't click any attack order and you're gonna just keep trying to pull through and it's it's gonna work because they're not actually attacking your chariots at all. He's just no, not at all. and so once they get through, they're gonna do something that's very big for us and they're gonna start killing the range units of the the enemy team. Uh, let me, I'm trying to switch to the... That's one of the uh, decisive victories in this game as well. I mean, that I successfully take out his uh, skirmishers, that makes our men much more e at ease because he won't be able to fire upon them and we will have fresh units coming in battling against this, well, much weaker units. I mean, because you can see my chariots are up to almost 400 kills soon. And what can they do? Just, they just, I don't know, man. Pontus is still standing still. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like, especially with Iberia. Like, if you, if you allow your enemy, enemy, enemy skirmishers to just shoot into you for a while, like, you're not going to have an army left because they have no armor. So, <laughs> killing all these range units was a really big deal. And again, like, they just aren't reacting appropriately to it at all. They're just kind of 
standing Open there. invitation to yeah. say, kill us, please. Yeah, so these chariots are, they've lost 8 out of 12, and they have 600 kills. I mean, okay, look, I'm not gonna lie, chariots are broken on this patch. Like, they're, they're too strong, they can get through enemies too easily. But, in a confined space like this, it was absolutely easy for them to tie down a chariot unit. M maybe it's gonna get 200, 300 kills, there's not much you can do about that. Mm. But... 700 kills should not be happening if you're actually responding correctly to a chariot. So they well, dropped yeah, the ball on that one, them. and, and they're, they're, you're just going to end up pulling through. And finally they routed, but ended up getting around 700 kills. So that was painful for them, for sure. Yeah, it is painful. And now you can see my chairs are... I, I get only one chariot left. And he actually is going to survive. Do you know that? It's pretty amazing. Your chariot ends up living? <laughs> yeah, one of them. But he will route, of course. He's what? routed. But he will survive. So the, the final melee engagement here has started at the front. Bunch of legionary cohorts and some of my veteran shield warriors and Lusitani Novas are getting into melee. Very, very bloody combat. Just a lot of guys crammed into a little tiny space. And we're just trying to gain as much ground on the street as we can. That's my flanking force and your flanking force. Mm. Move in from the other sides of the city. So your guys are fighting the hoplites over on this flank. So yeah. Get the the lighthouse of Alexandria in the background there. I'm really glad they added those historical landmarks. In the game. Makes, very beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice to watch. But you're gonna be, these Galatian Royal Guard should be able to cut through hoplites relatively easily, and you also have your Royal Pelcas over here as well. So it should be a pretty easy fight for you. Pretty easy. And then of course when I'm done on this side, I'm gonna send in my men to try to help out uh, on this side of yours. Uh, which I'm printing now, and then, of course, eventually they're gonna get in here, and then, when we're done with a couple men, they're gonna start to chain route, so... Yeah, I, I just wanna make it clear, you can't actually, I can't actually see when you drop. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I, know. Map. I know, <laughs> <laughs> but our viewers yeah. will see that, so... Oh, I also placed a couple uh, Cretan arches on the wall here, so... Oh, I didn't actually standing. see you do that. Where did you, put, where did you do that? Oh, I see. Yeah, Are they yeah. shooting in? Nice. Yeah, they're, they're like shooting down like... And you see that one of his hoplites are starting wavering. And when he's done, obviously those, those others are going to chain around soon enough. But, I mean, it's only a matter of time because they're being a triple sandwich at this moment. <laughs> I got Galatian Royal Guard, Royal Peltas and Nubian Spearmen like... Totally surrounded three hope, um, hope lines. Plus, Cretan arches are pounding from that wall. So yeah, it's yeah. just a matter of time till they're done. I like that move from you a lot, actually. They're racking up a lot of kills, and that actually is hell. They, he just proved me wrong in this replay. You can't actually use tactics in siege battles. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> he's gonna take over the uh, enemy wall and get some nice shots in there. So over on this side, I've been able to cut through a bunch of the the pike units because I had. Uh, some skirmishers shooting down the pikes, and then I also had my own sword, swordsman flanking. And uh, w we're having a little bit of trouble on this side because I didn't commit all of my forces over here, so definitely not a super easy fight for me coming no. through all these bronze shields and legendary cohorts. But ultimately, I, I think we do have the numerical superiority even on this side, and so eventually we're going to be able to cut through all those. And then over on this side, there's just no way they can really win this. I mean, they actually. If we didn't have forces on the other side of the battlefield to come in from behind, mm -hmm. all these bronze shield pikes and all these legionary cohorts would probably be too much for us to cut through. Cause, too much. Yeah, because there's there's no way sword units are going to cut through pikes from the front. It's just not going to mm -hmm. happen. Never. But the biggest thing here, of course, is that your Galatian Royal Guard and Royal Peltas are about to wrap up the hoplites on this side. So as soon as that happens, they can collapse in from the flank, crush mm -hmm. them from behind, and we can wrap up this battle. Exactly. And as you explained, from the frontal uh, uh, battle, it is impossible. Those, they're like, I don't know how many exactly, two, three, four, five, oh my god, five vision cohorts, six, all right, one vision is, and plus pike units, bronze shield pike units standing there, hoplites standing there. In a very uh, tight phalanx formation as well, they're not mm, very spread out, so there's no way you're gonna penetrate that from the front. <laughs> no way. Now Roman Legionary makes another move, so he realizes that I have broken through the gate here, uh, not the gate, I mean the line, I killed his hoplites and you're coming in almost from here as well, there's some chain rotting on the Pontus here, he realizes that and he's trying to put back a couple of his uh, I like that move legioners. a lot, that was very smart from him actually, it the is, one behind it that is. pikes is very very smart. Of course, because then they know that we have to deal with the pikes as you said earlier, uh, thick formation, 
it's really difficult and now he knows that he needs to protect this center but will that you know happen i mean will he be successful on that we shall see because his, his uh, general is also trapped in one way so yeah and now you can see that legion of course here and bronze shield pacman are routing he got only one legion of cohort left and then when you're done with that you're gonna get in into the battle here as well and then i believe that the hope has diminished and they're gonna lose a lot of um, heart so now you can see that on the center here that vigilis and legion of cohorts are starting wavering so the chain routing should start happening soon yeah at this point they have literally no hope of winning this battle they're completely mm. surrounded the bronze shield pikemen are really the only thing in this siege battle that could have really turned it in their favor just just placing those pikes in an appropriate manner and like actually engaging with them instead of plopping them down and not clicking any attack orders uh, would have changed things but he's actually not going to do that as one of my guys gets horribly destroyed and yeah so he's like these pike units cost so much money and they have two kills yeah 23 kills like Pontus I'm going to be honest Pontus dropped the ball on this one <laughs> he really well but you gotta be frank, man. I mean, the viewers know it too, so there's no shame on it telling that. I mean, he is the one, the reason why Roman lost the battle here. If he had a better uh, player, then, as you explained earlier, we would have really difficult job to penetrate this um, this entire battle. I mean, we would. The first mistake I think we did also that we didn't go with Lara skirmishers. I had only three Cretan archers, and let's say that this player was a really good player. Well, no offense, of course, no disrespect to him. I mean, that's just how it is. If he had really good macro skills, man, we would have big troubles. So we would have to have a lot of skirmishers if we wanted to deal with the pike units. And as I said, I had only three Cretan archers, so that wouldn't help me a lot. Not at all. Yeah, I think in siege battles it's definitely less about micro skill and more just about the army composition bringing mm. a lot of really annoying units. And the most annoying unit I can think of is pike unit. If if you plop one of those down oh. and actually click attack orders in a street, there's just mm. no way to get around it. The only way to counter it is to bring range units like javelins, preferably javelins, but Korean archers and slingers can work as well, and mm. just plug away at them. But the problem is if you don't put a pike cap on your enemy or a pike cap in general in siege battles, there's just no way. If, if someone brings an entire army of pikes, there is no skirmish force in the history of Rome 2 that could cut through all those pikes and make it make it through all those guys. There's just no way. So Do I wonder also that if, when you kill this general, he has only zero, kill, zero kills, yeah? Yeah. Patch 15, he has changed a lot, sure. I mean, they lost the general... Is, could that be one of the reasons why they started like losing fate and you know start chain routing that fast? Well, no, no. The, at the end there, you mean? Yeah. I well, mean, no. At the end, they chain routed because the balance bar shifted so far in our favor that the the automatic balance bar penalty just kicked in. I don't probably. think it was so much to do about the general. I think we just had so many forces left over and they didn't mm. that there was just no way they were gonna be able to like because we we look at the kills right here. You had twenty four hundred kills. I had sixteen hundred. That's basically both their entire armies. They had very few units left, so yeah. there was there was no way they were going to come back from that, and just it just caused the automatic morale penalty that made them run off the field. But I don't know. Like I don't play sieges often again because I feel like when I play Rome two, mm -hmm. I care more about the skill, the micro, the yeah. outmaneuvering your opponent. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like in that battle, despite the fact that maybe the Pontus player wasn't fantastic or wasn't paying attention or whatever we yeah. did outmaneuver them we did hit them yeah. on multiple sides and then of course there's just the beautiful aspect of it like i don't get to play on it was just a nice change of pace basically like you don't get to play on rome or carthage or alexandria too often or at least i don't i don't play siege battles so it's just a nice change of pace to get in there and just focus on the melee grind and get some nice close-ups and just see what goes, what goes and let, on. And let me say that I have the same feeling. I mean, I never played any siege battle at all. This was actually my first. And I gotta say, I, you know, you and me, we both did pretty good considering that we don't do siege battles. I mean, as I said, we could, you know, it could have changed. I mean, it could be for them favor since uh, if you could face like a really good, like players who, you know, done a lot of siege battles. Of course, they would know how to defend the city, right? Yeah. 
So as I said, perhaps we did something wrong, like too few skirmishing or too less of that or whatever. But all in all, I think we did a pretty good job. And I kind of enjoy this because, as I said, I don't do siege battles that often as I should. I do more land battles. That is my thing. Like I, When I get in the land battle, that's, that's a kick. That's a rush I get. But when I play this with you, 2v2 on the siege, I get the same kick. So for me, this was excellent. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I did too. Uh, one more thing I do want to say, though, and I just think it's really interesting about siege battles in this game. Obviously, if you're defending, you have the advantage, especially in Rome 2. Now, if we go back to, like, Shogun 2, or mm. maybe Napoleon or Empire, I don't know about those games because I didn't play those, but I know mm. that at least in Shogun 2, the attacker always had more funds because they had to penetrate enemy defenses, they had to go through walls, they mm. had to deal with scaling the walls and just dealing with the fact that the enemy team has fortifications. Mm -hmm. In Rome 2... The attacker and the defender actually get basically the same amount of funds, which I think is a little silly. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if someone knows how to change that, please let me know. But everything that I've seen so far tells me that if you change funds for one player, it changes the funds for the other player. So there's no way to make it more balanced and say give the attacking team 15,000 talents while giving the defending team 10,000 or 12,000 talents. Because that's how it was in Shogun 2. You automatically got less funds as a defender, and that's the way it should be. So exactly. again, it's not it's not balanced. If we're playing against people who are of similar skill level, as an attacker, there's no mm. way we're ever going to penetrate an enemy siege or no siege way. Fights. There's no way. You you just can't do it. But no. with that said, again, enjoyed a lot. Had a lot of fun. Enjoyed mm -hmm. commentating this with you. And yeah. do you have anything else you want to say to? No, I just want to thank you all and hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, the viewers out there, of course. So I just want to thank you, man. I really, I uh, really had fun. Yeah, um, and I'll leave Attila the Great's channel in the description below. I've left it on a couple of my videos before, but this is the first time I've had him on a commentate. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, we will talk to you all later. See you guys. Take, take care.